All right, guys, the first phase of sprinting is your acceleration phase. Basically, anything that's not top end maximal velocity, which is you can't run any faster no matter how hard you try, is technically acceleration, right? But within that, there, the beginning part of the sprint is really what we focus on acceleration, and we really call that the drive phase. Drive phase being the first two to four steps where all our action is concentric, all our action is down and back, and there's a, not a lot of cycling going on at the feet, okay? There's a few, uh, few principles we focus on, projection, rhythm, and rise being the three main ones. Projection is getting my body out into space from a stationary position or from a slow position, all right? Projection is my ability to extend at the hip, drive the shin angle at the appropriate angle, and get the body moving, breaking inertia, creating momentum every step a little bit more, a little bit more. That is projection. Rhythm falls right into projection because as I get out myself out into space, the amount of time I have on the ground is gonna automatically shrink. So my first couple steps, I may be on the ground longer than I'm, on, I'm in the air. After that, it automatically switches and then it keeps progressing towards that switch as I go. So steps one and two, I may be on the ground a little bit longer than in the air. By step three, that, that, that formula is already inverted. So I'm more time in the air than I'm in the ground. Step five, six, seven, much more so by then we start working on what we call transitional sprinting and getting into top end. We'll get into that in the next module. With the rhythm, you're gonna get an increase in flight time on each step, like, as I said, and a, and a decrease in ground contact time. Yet, somehow, you've gotta be able to produce just as much force on the ground, if not more force on the ground, to get to that next step because you don't have as much time as you did on the, on the previous steps. To do that, you've gotta attack the ground from a higher and higher position each step, which leads us to our rise, okay? But when we say rise, we mean the hips coming up taller and taller in each step, with that, the torso rising up on each step, and with that, the foot recovering from a higher position on each step, right? Once we put all this together into our sprint, we're gonna be very smooth coming out either of a two-point stance or into, or into our transitional phase, and this is gonna be the key to most of your athletic movements on the baseball diamond. Within acceleration, guys, there's a few things that we wanna take into account and really, really focus on. First of all is, the shin angle in which we're gonna push the body through, right? The, whatever shin angle we have when we're hitting the ground, it should be very, very aggressive at first and steadily become more and more vertical as we go, right? So this is my shin angle on step one, step two, step three, and you see, notice every, notice every time it gets a little bit more vertical, okay? This is because I'm trying to create the most momentum and break inertia the most on the first step, so I really need to push back behind me to get that body going, and each step as I'm building momentum, I get less time on the ground, so I gotta hit more and more vertical as we go, as we've gone over in the previous part of this module. Okay, so shin angle is, is supremely important. With that, our hips gotta extend and get the body and torque matching that shin angle, okay? It does me no good to have an aggressive shin angle this way and then have my body lower where I can't get the hip through, right? It doesn't matter how hard I hit the ground with an aggressive shin angle here, if my hip doesn't project at that same angle, notice the word projection again, if my hip does not project at the same angle, I'm not going anywhere. So basically I'm putting all this power into the ground back this way and my hip's staying here. That's why we never cue stay low, right? We never cue stay down because that, does, that is inefficient towards getting the hip out into space, okay? Center of mass is based on the hip. If we wanna get the center of mass traveling, we've got to get the hip to extend through, all right? Foot stiffness is gonna be a big part of not bleeding energy, right? A lot of times we bleed energy when foot hits the ground and there's a give of the foot in the ground before we can receive that energy back into our sprint. The stiffer we have our ankles and the stronger we have our foot when we hit the ground, the more we're able to receive that impact immediately and projecting our body forward. Finally, we don't want to overcook the backside, right guys? So when we're sprinting out, and we're, really this, this happens throughout the entire sprint where we don't want to overcook the backside, primarily in our acceleration, right? So what happens is if we over push on the back end, what's gonna happen is the foot's gonna keep kicking back this way, it's gonna throw me off. Again, now my chest is forward, my hip is back, and I am not able to get myself into an optimal position to push forward on the next step. Right? If, I, if I'm kicking back this way, I'm gonna land with my foot underneath me. I can't bring the foot forward and attack back into the ground, which is what we want. We always wanna be able to drive the foot forward and drive it back into the ground. That will not happen by overcooking the backside. Plus it leads to an in, in, inefficient hip positions, right? So 
when we're driving out, and everybody's gonna be different, right? Some guys are gonna shoot out at an angle like this. A little stronger or shorter athlete might shoot out at an angle like this. Really explosive athletes maybe shoot out at an angle like this. But typically we're looking at about a 45 degree angle of extension through the entire body, right? And if this was my body coming out at about 45 degrees or so, my other leg's recovering straight through. And here's my little stick figure guy really trying to accelerate, right? Let's say here's a bag right here and he's trying to steal to second base, uh, looking at it from the back of the field, I guess, right? So as the, as the athlete's coming out this way, first couple steps, my focus is to drive back. So this shin should be driving back this way to get my body going this way, right? Because of that, my first couple steps, I'm going to recover very low to the ground to keep myself close to the ground so I can really push myself forward. Right, so this foot's gonna recover this way instead of recovering back and around this way. I simply don't have the time because I don't have enough time in the air to get there. So my foot's gonna recover low, it's gonna tack back down, it's gonna recover low, and attack back down, and it's gonna go in this pattern. And every time it's gonna get just a little higher and a little higher, that being the foot pattern, right? By the third step or so, and let me make a little bit more aggressive angle here. So let's say this is my step one here, and I'm pushing this way, this leg's coming back down and pushing this way. Step two, let's say we mirror that angle there. The body's just gonna be a little bit more upright. I'm still trying to piston action the legs here. And then on every step, I'm just gonna try to get a little bit taller because don't forget, we need to get that rise coming as we're sprinting, right? And every step's just a little bit taller. And there should probably be a few steps in between here as we're rising to this position. But as we start getting taller and taller, now we are gonna allow a little bit of a cycling action going because now we need that vertical attack because we don't have as much time on the ground, right? So in this step, we have all this on the ground. In this step, we have this on the ground. In this step, we have this on the ground. Remember the foot's coming back this way. In this step, we might only have this on the ground. Next step, we might only have that on the ground. Conversely, every step, the air time is gonna be, let's say this is gonna be a very short one, the air time is going to be a little longer, a little longer, and they say really long on this one. That way we're able to raise the heel up, come up and over, and attack vertically into the ground. And th that's the basis of acceleration right there, guys. It's pushing myself as hard and violently as I can into a tall position.